Thank you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Letta Jordan, and I'm the first vice chair of Community Board Two. Uh, Mr. Singletary will not be with us tonight, so I'm going to be chairing the meeting. Uh, I don't know if uh, Ms. Barbara Zella Gringa is here. Oh, there she is, our second vice chair, and our um, secretary, Jessica Thurston, is here. Okay, and um, I would just like to ask, uh, we don't have too much of an aggressive uh, schedule uh, for this meeting. <clears throat> so I'd just like to ask all the chairs to uh, uh, introduce themselves, of course, their vice chairs. So before we get started, uh, uh, I wanna welcome you all. And all, as you all know, this meeting is being recorded. And um, we are, I just need a motion to accept the agenda. Does everybody have a copy of the agenda? So moved. Second. Okay. Thank you. I think that sounds like it's unanimous. Um, and uh, has anybody got it? Uh, well, let's go to the fourth item on the agenda, the uh, adoption of the previous minutes. If you have any changes to the minutes, you can also send them to the um, to Ms. Thurston or to the uh, board office. Uh, are there any changes or deletions or additions to the uh, minutes? I sent them to the board office. Okay. So I'll just... Uh, We'll just say we had consensus on adopting the uh, previous minutes from January 2023. Mr. Singletary is not here. I don't have a report from him. So uh, that was item number five. So we can go on to item number six, which are committee chairperson reports. And um, we'll start with Mr. Bill Flanoy for the Economic Development and Employment Committee. Hey, thank you, Chair Jordan. Um, so uh, the Economic Development and Employment Committee, uh, the chair, Denise Peterson, is my co-chair, and Kate Gilman is my secretary. So uh, we met uh, previously. Uh, we had the Green Market Report that actually uh, gave us a cannabis report beginning the first Tuesday of the month. Um, we basically discussed uh, quite a few items that are going on right now that are basically in the news. Uh, primarily, we're looking at enforcement of the illegal cannabis uh, dispensaries. And also we're looking at some other items that were of interest to us. Uh, but the primary item was, of course, how do we go about enforcing the illegal cannabis? As we all know, there's only three legal dispensaries in all of New York City. We also uh, discussed other items about that too, but I gave that report for the general meeting. So I'll go into more detail than that. Uh, let's see now, uh, other than that, uh, I went to the CLS uh, board meeting that was on Wednesday, the 22nd. I'll be giving a report, um, write a written report to the board office later on. Uh, at that meeting, we discussed the bid assessments for uh, CLS and also the financial report for CLS. Uh, one of the things we discussed for new business is the shared streets on Hoyt Street between Skirmerhorn and Livingston. That's a problem because uh, it does not allow people to actually uh, delivery trucks actually park to deliver items because the Hoyt Street is a one lane street now. And because it's a one lane street, there's no place for trucks to stop to unload. And what they're doing now is they're actually driving on the sidewalk and parking on the Thank sidewalk. You. Okay. And in addition to that, we also discussed the issue uh, currently with the Skrimmerhorn Street because of what's going on with the, now the one lane it's now problems with individuals who are now trying to get around downtown Brooklyn. It has become a problem because now it's not a two-way street. So that was another issue. Um, the next meeting we have is going to be March 7th. Uh, I also want to bring to attention that one of the things I'm going to be looking at is on the 28th, which is tomorrow. Uh, the Brooklyn Navy Yard is going to be having a job fair between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. I'm going to see if I can uh, stop in and check on that. And on uh, tomorrow, the 20th, also, the BQE will have a central public workshop between 6.30 and 8.30. I want to check on that also, because obviously that's one of the issues that the this district is very interested in. Uh, on uh, Between the 8th and the 15th, IMPAC will have a financial workshop between 6 and 8, which I think individuals should be very interested in, uh, especially in our, our committee. And uh, finally, Alloy Development uh, has a full-time construction positions that are currently available. Um, they're going to be sponsoring free OSHA training, and this is going to be in downtown Brooklyn. Uh, that information will be available. Uh, I believe if you check the board office newsletter, all that information is currently available there. 
And uh, that's my report, uh, Chair Jordan. Great. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. Flannoy. And for committee members only, uh, if there are any questions, please raise your electronic hand. Uh, and uh, Mr. Flannoy will, uh, any questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Flannoy. Uh, next is me, I guess, the Finance and Personnel Committee. We had a meeting on January 23rd, and I did report that, uh, the results of that meeting to the board. We were going to meet on February 23rd, but we did not meet. Uh, next meeting is March 23rd, and um, that's about all I, I have. I don't have any other report there. Okay, any, okay. Um, the next committee to report, uh, Mr. Brandon Smith, the Health, Environment, and Social Services. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry, I just mentioned that my vice chair is Mr. Brandon, Brandon Smith but he's also the chair of the Health, Environment, and Social Services Committee, and he's coming up next to report. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, my vice chair is uh, Ms. Nicole McKnight. Uh, I hope you all are having a nice Monday. Um, not a whole lot to report because we had a big presentation at our meeting at the Health Committee on uh, uh, the um, uh, OASIS application for unincarcerate America, and it, it took up a significant portion of our of our meeting. Otherwise, we got our standard COVID update, which was um, good to know that um, we we did not see a significant spike in the COVID rates around the holidays this year, comparably to how we we had seen in prior years, which was um, a positive to to note. Uh, I gave an update on the uh, one Hoyt Street homeless shelter um, community advisory board, which I've been uh, attending. And uh, effectively, at least in the last quarter, there haven't been any complaints that, uh, that were, were noted by the, uh, by the, uh, the shelter. They, they shared a story about a success story at their, um, at their, their location. And uh, they've recently appointed a new program director, a gentleman by the name of Blaine Arthur. Um, there wasn't a, a, a very large community attendance at this uh, advisory board meeting, but they're hoping to do a better job for um, reaching out for next time. Um, otherwise, on the health fair, we've had a, uh, a, a, a we had a, a good couple of uh, subcommittee meetings, and we've kind of broken up into smaller working groups, which are trying to focus on the most pressing items first, namely getting the flyer established and uh, trying to make headway with the um, uh, the audio equipment, as well as trying to identify the theme and the panel discussion topic. In terms of the theme, we are preliminarily tentatively going with uh, better health, better living, and with respect to the panel topic, there are a number of different uh, ideas that are under consideration. We're going to have a meeting in uh, a couple of weeks with our small subgroup of volunteers who uh, working on that to hash out the uh, the details of an initial proposal. Um, otherwise, it's going along pretty well. I think the one thing that it would be really beneficial to have, if, if you or anyone on your committees are aware or not otherwise involved is people to volunteer on the day of the event. It's going to be June 10th. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, we have a, uh, uh, we'll need help with setting up all the tables at the beginning of the day and breaking them down at the end of the day. And also people to help with logistics in between, but, but those are the, those are the main things. Um, I will also note that the Friends of Commodore Berry Park had an additional permit for a uh, uh, the date of June 24th. So we're using that as our rain date in case there is a um, uh, there's a, uh, a big storm or something on June 10th. But otherwise, we're still in good shape, and um, we uh, I, I sent a bud budget off to the board office for the tables and chairs and such, and. Uh, that that's pretty much my report on things. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Uh, for committee members, any questions for Mr. Smith? 
Mr. Flannoy. I'm sorry, and then Mr. Mr. Gordon after that. Good. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry, I couldn't un unmute myself. Mr. Smith, I'm sorry, I missed the uh, meeting at one Hoyt. Uh, when was that? It was. I think I have it in my notes here. Uh, yeah, January, January 30th. January 30th. January 30th. January 30th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike, yeah, I was concerned about that because uh, a lot of the individuals are now uh, sitting at the shared seats. Okay. The shared streets, they have the, the tables and chairs, and a lot of them are building around there. And there's now a lot of other issues going on right now with uh, aggressive panhandling. Was that brought up at the meeting? No, nobody brought up anything about that at the meeting, but it, it, you're mentioning it to me now. If, if you're not at the next one, I'll mention it and I encourage you if you do get the invite to, to get to the next meeting. It, did you not receive the invite? I, I, I noticed one thing was that the Department of Social Services, they circulated it on like January 26th for a January 30th meeting date and it seemed rather short notice. And I was wondering if maybe that played into why there was not a very large attendance there. I yeah, I would like that. to hear about that also. I didn't okay. get any notice. Um, yeah, another issue, uh, Brandon, is um, the store owners in the area are very upset now because there is blatant shoplifting. And that's another issue that a lot of store owners are getting upset about. Okay. Is this around the area of One Hoyt Street? Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's becoming problematic. And a lot of the store owners are now getting frustrated and uh, it's starting to uh, become a problem where they're looking at possibly discontinuing doing business there. Okay. Uh, is there any indication that it's the people from the, the shelter who are engaged in this? You know, that's the problem. I don't know who's from the shelter, who's not, but the number of individuals in the area has grown significantly. Okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing this, Mr. Flanoy. And I, again, I will say there is no, no concerns like this brought up by anyone at the meeting, uh, but hopefully they, and it, there was a concerted effort by, um, uh, stated by Councilman Ressler's office to get to the, uh, to get to a, uh, a, a better notice of, of people for, for the next meeting, like to encourage the Department of Social Services to give people better notice for the next meeting, or, or to at least try to figure out why the attendance was, was not very high at this meeting. I think that's a more accurate statement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Ms. Hagula. Uh, hi, Brandon. I'm just was curious if the health fair is going to be in the same part of Commodore Barry Park as it, you did it the last time, or will be in a different section of the park? Uh, just curious. No, thanks for your question, Carlton. The uh, health fair is going to be in the same park, Commodore Berry Park, but on the exact opposite side. The uh, further, last, yeah, further down. Right, right, right. Last year, the health fair was on the uh, corner of Navy and Flushing. And this year, the health fair will be on the corner of North Elliott and Park. And I think you'll find it's a little bit of a greener area over there. And we actually went out and took a look at the area just to have an initial scoping out of it. And there's a lot of space over there. So, um, and, and I think it's also going to be much easier for uh, vendors and uh, people who are coming, bringing equipment like, uh, you know, a DJ or something like that to uh, uh, bring their equipment into that area. Uh, because the entrances are much closer to the street and you don't have to go up a big flight of stairs, which is nice. So a, a lot of good things about it. Okay. I guess just remind us as just about the time when it's, uh, I guess, when the health fair comes, just to remind people where in the park it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. okay thank you very much. Ms. Anadu. I realize I don't know if I'm actually allowed to talk now because I'm not on the executive committee. So sorry if so. Well, you're you're a board member, so you can ask. Um, just going back to um, Mr. Flanoy's comment, when one Hoyt was 
going up, there were a few pretty, I'll describe them as disheartening meetings where the idea was trying to get the community to talk. And particularly, there was a lot of residents from 11 Hoyt. And even at that meeting before the building had opened, there was a really unfortunate parallel being drawn with homelessness and criminality, or the idea that inherently because these men who knows how, and we are all at the end of the day, one, one accident away from that potentially. But anyway, so it just, so not saying that it isn't happening, but I think to Brandon's question around where is it actually coming from, I would just really hope that as a board that we take the position that like, let's really investigate where we can and with, you know, within whatever our purview is um, to make sure that we're not inadvertently contributing to a narrative that people are trying to potentially push, which supports some of the initial pushback. Um, so it's just a comment um, on that. Um, so I'm not saying it's not happening, but again, the it just, it feels like a continuing narrative that started before the shelter even opened and anyone moved in. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Feibusch? Yeah, hi, thank you. Uh, regarding the health fair, uh, one of my subtasks or whatever is to let schools know, hold the day, you know, type of things, the schools nearby to kind of get some energy going about it. And they shouldn't plan their big events that day, maybe. Um, so we need a save the date flyer, even if or the theme or the the particulars aren't set, just a save the date, this is gonna be happening, more information to come, maybe a contact, et cetera, you got it. Okay, and the other thing is a few schools, because I'm focusing on the four schools that are you know, the closest, even though we will get to all of them, of course, hopefully. Um, one of the schools said, can we have our marching band go? Can we have, you know, other kids wanna perform? And, you know, I'm not sure if this is a venue for performance, if their performances are really great and would enhance the uh, experience for all. So, so, I mean, I'm not sure. So uh, I'd like a little guidance on that. Okay. Well, to your first point about the flyer, I estimate that we're going to have um, a flyer together by hopefully the, the end of the week of March 10th. Um, we have a draft flyer, um, but we're finalizing a few things, and we have some some great individuals who want to take the lead on beautifying it a little bit. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm optimistic that will be coming together soon. Um, with respect to your comment about the the marching band and and such, uh, let's talk more about that, Betty. I'm I'm interested oh. to hear what wh what we can do. We do have parameters in that. You, you know, our sound is limited and we will, would have to fit it in with the rest of the schedule, but definitely things that bring more children to the event is, are a good thing. And, you know, if there's a way to do it, we can, we, I would like to, to do it. I, I just want to kind of um, uh, approach things steps by step, particularly if we have to get parks department approval for some kind of additional sound. Um, and uh, I, <sighs> I, I'll be, but at the same time, I'd be more than supportive of, of trying to pursue that mm -hmm. effort. Okay, so, you know, let me know, we can discuss it. It isn't like definite which school, but a few people have said, oh, we, we have this, we have that, can, can you know, the young people uh, perform. So, yeah, we'll work yeah. on it together. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. work on it. All right, great. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Flanoy, you have another question or a comment? Yeah, uh, Chair Jordan, I just wondered if I could follow up on that uh, comment from Miss uh, from Emily. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, Emily, uh, by all means, I totally agree with you. And one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I, went, I attended that meeting was to bring that up. Uh, you may not be aware of this, but I used to be a board member of the Skrimmerhorn, okay, which is right on the corner. And I know most of the homeless guys in the area because of that. And we have a relationship. These are new individuals who I've never seen before. That's why I'm concerned. So the other individuals I know, we have a good relationship. They all know who I am um, and basically talk on a regular basis and I look out for them. But these new individuals, I don't know who they are. And that's why I want to 
check out one Hoyt to see what the future's what we can do about that. So I, I totally agree in agreement with you. I'm being very careful about what I do and say, but I still at the same time I'm looking out for this the store owners in the area and it has increased significantly. Okay, thank, thank you. you so uh, yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Flanoy. Thank everybody for the comments and thank you, Mr. Smith, for your report. Uh, next will be land use, Mr. Carlton Gordon. Thank you, Leonard. Uh, okay. First, we will thank the work of our co-chair, Daughtry Kostarfin, and the hard work of our secretary, uh, Karen Johnson, who really does a lot of work uh, on her, you know, for her business as well as for us as well. So we thank them for that. Uh, I just wanted to point out at the start of my report that the Barnes & Noble bookstore that had been on the corner of Court Street and Skimmerhorn Street is now closed. Uh, it's been there for a number of years, but it's uh, recently passed by and that is that is now closed, uh, no longer uh, in operation. So I just thought that the, the board should be aware of that. Uh, we had a, our committee had our meeting a couple, well, about a week, week or two ago, and we had a number of landmark preservation commission certificates of appropriateness. Uh, we approved uh, applications for 140 State Street in Brooklyn Heights and 216 Wyckoff Street over in uh, Borham Hill. We disapproved an application at 33 uh, Skimmerhorn Street. Uh, and also at the meeting, we had a very good discussion uh, on a couple of things in the affordable housing matter. First thing that we had a discussion about was on the New York City Housing Authority or NYCHA housing. Uh, we were very concerned, well, I brought up a concern about rents being paid to NYCHA. Uh, before the pandemic, I read that the, at the rent roll, well, let's say that 90% of NYCHA tenants had been paying their rent. That's collapsed now to about 65, 68% of the entire rent roll. So that's something that because NYCHA is dependent upon the uh, the revenues, you know, the rent roll revenues to get work done in these buildings. And that's one of the things that we're very concerned about. Uh, Karen Johnson also uh, was concerned about vacancies, especially in vacancies in NYCHA projects in our community board. And we've been hearing about vacancies in uh, NYCHA projects, and we were trying to see if we could find out, and hopefully we can, you know, we can maybe get some progress on it to find out just how, you know, how many, you know, how many vacancies, you know, how the vacancies are in the NYCHA projects in our board. So these are things we're trying to get at. Now, and I also wanted to point out sure. the work that uh, Daughtry Kostarfin is doing on the Atlantic Avenue group that they're, they're trying to see if they can, at some, you know, lean towards hopefully affordable housing for the future. Uh, they have a group, working group on that. And Daughtry Kostarfin's our, our woman on the on that one. And she's trying to work hard and trying to see if we can get something out of that. So that's uh, our report from the Landmark Land Use Committee. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Gordon. And uh, I'll, I'll open it up for questions. I just wanna make one comment. I did pass by that uh, old Barnes and Noble building and I actually I saw it in the chat. They moved around the corner uh, on Atlantic Avenue to mm -hmm. the old Barney spot. I think that's what uh, yeah. I think Jessica or somebody had put in the in the chat. So uh, that's where uh, um, Barnes and Noble um, will be located, right near uh, Trader Joe's. Oh, near Trader Joe's, okay, that's good to know. Yeah. And uh, any questions for Mr. Gordon? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Gordon. Thank you. And your committee. Uh, next will be Parks and Rec Recreation, Ms. Barbara Zala Gringer. I hope thank I Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Uh, yes, and probably uh, where the Barnes and Noble was on Court Street and where the was, that's supposed to be 
from Barbara, uh, you, Barbara, you're going you're coming going in and out a little bit, your volume. All right. Is that any better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I, I had some problems earlier. I don't know if they were from the board or from me. At any rate, we had a wonderful meeting on February 13th, starting the dialogue uh, for our committee about climate change and parks. We had three presenters. Uh, the first one was Michelle Mueller Gomez, the manager of climate change research at the Central Park Conservancy. <clears throat> she spoke about their work and um, the danger of climate change in New York City because of flooded landscapes, increased prevalence of invasive species, damage to infrastructure, increased pests and pest pathogens, loss of biodiversity, and an overall loss of ecological and social benefits. Uh, she urged us to protect parks in the face of climate change and that doing so is an environmental justice issue. Uh, uh, having park, good parks uh, can help reduce our vulnerability by absorbing stormwater runoff. And uh, everyone agrees we need more trees and we need to acquire land to protect it. And of course, funding is, is uh, important to, to see all of those through. We then heard from Shakara Petaway, who's the senior manager of park projects and programs at the Fort Green Park Conservancy. She is in charge of, of an, a new wonderful environmental justice education program there. Uh, they have 11 students, teenagers, um, majority of whom come from the neighboring Farragut, Whitman and Ingersoll developments. And they are learning about ways to mitigate and potentially resolve the environmental harms and public health risks in Fort Maine. And they'll be working on a project together. They're also being given an opportunity to meet many people who have all kinds of different jobs in the environmental area. So they can see what sort of job opportunities they are, there are in this, um, in this area. And then they will, uh, students are being paid actually a stipend of about $300 a month. And um, in the summer, they'll be accepting applications for the next round of people. And to get to those 11 students, they had 50 applications. So it's, it's a great program and I'm sure we'll be hearing more about it. Then finally, we heard from Hannah Empel, who's a program analyst of the city's program at Nature Conservancy. She spoke about the forest for all New York City and the New York City urban forest agenda and touched on the Million More Trees initiative. As you might expect, she, um, she spoke about the benefits of trees, both in parks and on streets, that this urban forest stores carbon, cools the air, reduces mental stress, lowers blood pressure, and provides community cohesion. So her group um, advocates for increased tree planning and maintenance. So uh, our next meeting is scheduled for uh, March 20th, Monday. So stay tuned for more information about that. Uh, also, uh, I want to thank my co-chair, Andrew Rastwecki, who's not here this evening, and our incredible uh, minutes taker, Thomas H. So thank you, both of them. Thank you so much, Barbara. Uh, are there any questions for the Fox and Recreation Chair? All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Allegringa, for uh, you and your committee. Thank you, Mr. George. And uh, next we'll have transportation and public safety, Mr. Sid Meyer. Good evening, everyone. Good, good evening, Mr. Jordan. Uh, my co-chair is es Esther Blount and my uh, minute taker is our uh, uh, John Quint and he's been serving for a long time at that. We had as usual, a lively meeting. Uh, we discussed the conditions on Park Avenue under the BQE and the fact that uh, uh, it's been neglected. It hasn't been, uh, it's not clean. It's not uh, been re, uh, uh, re you know, and not, not flattened out uh, that the city and in its infinite wisdom decided to take a block away for uh, uh, the bike program to use for repairs and has not been working very well with the local community on what they're doing and how they're doing it. They, they actually only took the Yomi section that had been cleaned uh, uh, 
and that they and that the people the people had work to clean on. And we are going to work with them through the community uh, district board on trying to get better communication, trying to get the the uh, street redone. Uh, uh, and uh, we're we're going to see. Uh, 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 we're going we're going to work with them to see what happens on that. And that's going to take a number of months to work through. Uh, also came before the board was a uh, co-naming a street for Edward Carter, who I'm sure many of you uh, remember <laughs> from his time on the board. Uh, we voted unanimously to approve the co-naming. Uh, I'm not sure whether it has to be an action item for the uh, um, for this committee or for the community board. Uh, but if we need an action report, we're, we're happy to do that as well. Uh, there are a number of other things going on that the community should be aware of. Uh, people keep raising the issues of the redoing of the uh, Brooklyn bus route. That is an ongoing uh, thing for the MTA. The MTA has a website where people can uh, put in their input. Uh, we had a meeting that was primarily about that. Uh, the uh, MTA will be back before they finalize the changes. We've made recommendations whether they will listen to us. Uh, that's uh, uh, another issue. Uh, the BQE visioning sections, uh, sessions are coming up this week. There's one in, in uh, person tomorrow, whether because the snow will happen or not, I don't know yet. I mean, they did cancel alternate side of the street parking uh, tomorrow. Uh, uh, I don't expect it's going to be that uh, uh, difficult. Uh, the the city is concentrating on our section, which is called the central section. Uh, there's a, a, a large number of people who are unhappy with the uh, uh, BQE, uh, what the city's visioning is, because they think it's too myopic. And as you can see from the notes, uh, uh, Taya put in the, there was an article, there have been articles about this. And uh, the BQE uh, is still a, a work in progress. There's no, not been any defi definitive uh, action taken. There are issues between, they have not put the weight in motion in, the, in effect yet. There are issues with the, uh, uh, with the federal DOT on that. There are issues with the state DOT on it. And it's, uh, uh, as usual, it's... Uh, uh, not moving well, very not moving uh, quickly enough, not moving fast enough, and the community's input is not being listened to enough as well. Uh, the uh, I, I reported at the community board meeting about Omni that the Omni is finally opened up that you could use it for senior citizens. What I did in in working out my problems, which took about six phone calls, uh, is that the best thing to do is to make is to keep your regular discount card that they sent you and you have for, for senior citizens and handicapped and use that until they announce and they will send you a new Omni card when they have the Omni up and running. So the best thing to do is do nothing. Me, unfortunately, I listened to them and said, oh, this is good. You'll be able to use your credit card. Well, you can only use one credit card, and as you put the credit card in, you lose the Metro card. So uh, uh, I, I strongly recommend that you just leave it the way it is. Uh, as we uh, as we discussed, the city has a, appointed a new deputy mayor for, I think it's, she's called the deputy mayor for open spaces, and she will be following up on both open streets and opening restaurants and supervising DOT mostly about their implementation. Uh, hopefully they'll get it done so it will be ready for uh, this summer. Uh, I look forward to working with them and trying to make it so we don't have as many problems. The, the big problem we've had, and, and you've heard the discussion about Skirmhorn and Hoyt, is that we make recommendations to DOT and they say they're gonna come back to us and they rarely do before they actually implement things. And they've cut the amount of time that 
we have to comment on open streets. We've asked them for additional time. We will hopefully work with DOT and the, and the community board about it. And I will be happy to answer any questions that anybody has. Thank you very much, Mr. Maya. I believe uh, my recollection that the co-naming initiative uh, has to go to the full board, I believe. So uh, uh, are there any questions for Mr. Maya? And thank you for your report. Okay, doesn't look like any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Maya, you and your committee. Uh, and our next committee to report is Youth and Education and Cultural Affairs, Ms. Betty Feibusch. Yeah, good evening. Thank you. I also want to introduce or reintroduce my esteemed uh, colleague from my committee, Nick Ferrer. Hi, Nick. Uh, welcome to Executive Board. Okay. So uh, we Hi. met with the Summer Youth Employment Program let, let earlier. This last week, yeah, and uh, we got a high level overview about the program this year. It will be in person as opposed to it was remote, you know, during part of COVID. Uh, we did not get the information about which agencies in our uh, community district uh, will be administering for uh, the young people in our district, and we're supposed to get that information. But it seems like a robust program involving a lot of young people and the ages going up to the early 20s, I think 23 or 24. So there's uh, you know, apprenticeship, job training, uh, the ability to work uh, beyond you know, a few years. It was they were uh, helping in, in summer camps and daycares, and now they will be in uh, we're told that there'll be in a greater variety of uh, settings so they can explore their, you know, young people's uh, interest in different careers. So that's always a good thing, but we'd like to know where in our district. Okay, um, and I want to share that. We, I got several notes from attendants uh, coordinators in some of our, our district schools that about the issue of chronic absenteeism. And they were asking me to bring up to the board and I felt the executive committee would be a good place to start regarding uh, how schools can uh, get incentive, uh, different incentives for young people for, for attendance. And it doesn't mean every time you come to school, you get a prize, but it's like when a school has an attendance program and is working closely with a family, um, for certain young people, knowing that if they come to school X number of days, they will get something that can motivate them. Of course, there are many other strategies as well, and we're gonna be exploring that uh, with our schools and also uh, bringing some literature review in, uh, but I wanted to ask my colleagues, um, do, do you have ideas about organizations, companies, other partners that as we develop uh, a connection with our attendance teachers that, that could be helpful for the young people to, to get them to come to school? So I just raise that to people. Okay, I, I just have a suggestion. Uh, first of all, have you discussed that at your committee, Ms. Fiber? Yes. Okay, because yes. uh, uh, whoever has suggestions can get to you, uh, get those to you and you could have a you know, discussion or, or whatever mm -hmm. it's about that. Yeah, okay. no, I, I'm thinking though that individually, uh, some of the committees have connections with the bids, some of, committees have connections with other people and community organizations. And this is a big deal because if we can keep young people in school, then they can graduate. And there's, there's just like a better life for people who graduate school. Absolutely. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Ms. Fibers. Any questions for Ms. Fibers? Okay, hearing none, uh, thank you very much for your report, Ms. Fibish, and your committee's work.
Um, I think that ends our committee reports. And uh, is there any other uh, business for the executive committee? Yeah, I, I have a, uh, actually two items, but one item is very brief. The Brooklyn Swab, the Solid Waste Advisory, will be meeting with um, Alberta President Antonio Reynoso and the, there are uh, invitations going out to all the community boards. Many community boards participated in the last conversation and we wanna push this work further to a you know, city policy. Alberta President is a big advocate of um, uh, various environmental measures to, to help this challenge. Uh, and I know that a few months ago, some of our members of CB2 were able to attend the meeting. Uh, and it isn't going to be a rehash. It's going to be to bring the work forward, suggest ideas and new actions and so on. Uh, and my second comment is basically to the executive board that I was looking at the bylaws and our last bylaws were in 2012, just more than 10 years. And I think any vibrant organization, people should look at bylaws uh, periodically uh, if there are tweaks or things that need to be changed because our situation is different than 10 years ago. Uh, so maybe people can mull that over and we can discuss how to move that forward if people want to do that. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, are there any comments? So, Ms. Thurston? Yeah, I just wanted to um, just a quick question, follow up question for Betty. Uh, it, so, the SWAT meeting will be, the invite will be sent to all community board members? To all community boards. I think the oh. mailing list is to the district managers or to the office and to the committee heads. Okay. But then, and you know, anyone who's interested in it, of course, can participate. Do you know what day it is? You know, I was looking at my notes and I can't I'll, find it, but it's in March. I can tell you that. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. I'll keep an eye out. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. What's happening with remote meetings and the uh, and and what's happening with you know, uh, with especially the committee meetings and going back to the live meetings? I'm thoroughly confused. Uh, I haven't heard anything myself, uh, Ms. Mueller. Mr. Meyer, I do not blame you for being thoroughly confused because there were some periods during COVID when it was changing every week. Um, right now, we are in a prolonged sort of grace period. I believe our second, but the last we we're, we're we're tracking federal, state, and city extensions, right? So the current federal extension is goes through uh yeah. it's through the end of march so we don't and and because that's you know a month away many things could change on the city or state level so we're okay for now um i i wish it were different but you may not know until very last minute if we're going back to in person i i the one who has the hardest work on that is you and a uh, I'm, I hope they give That's us. That's true. <laughs> or, I hope they give us better notice so that that it'll be easier for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maya. Uh, was there another hand up? No, I guess not. Okay. Uh, all right. Very good. Uh, now we will go to the next uh, item number eight: uh, community forum. Is there anybody from the community or a board member that uh, would like to address the uh, committee for two minutes? Okay, Mr. Sklar, and uh, well, you can identify yourself, Mr. Sklar. Sure, thank you, and props for getting my last name right. It's a, it's a tricky one sometimes. Uh, hey, everybody, my name is Emmett Sklar. I'm from the Office of the Public Advocate. I serve as the Brooklyn Borough Advocate, um, so I cover... Uh, all Brooklyn's community boards, um, starting at one, two, and three, but we have a bunch in Brooklyn. So um, I get around, and I want to thank you all for having me. I actually am on uh, CB6 myself, uh, but I grew up uh, in CB2 in the confines of this district. So happy to be here. Um, primarily here to say hi. I started a few weeks ago, and I'm making the rounds, uh, but also to be uh, a resource for you all and to offer our office 
um, as a resource to the community board, um, we can do a couple things. Uh, we have a lot of uh, subject matter experts um, on city uh, policy and municipal issues that some of your committees might be working on dealing with, um, which we're happy to make available uh, to your committees if you ever want uh, folks to come in and talk about a particular issue. Um, we can also highlight um, and hopefully amplify uh, work that you guys are doing, um, events, that sort of thing. Uh, that you're trying to promote. Uh, we want to be a resource and to help when we can. Um, and just uh, finally, we can also uh, help connect uh, you and your organizations and committees to uh, various folks around Brooklyn and around the city. So if you're ever looking for partners uh, for some of the work that you're doing, uh, happy to, to be a resource uh, there as well. Um, so just saying hello, I'll put my info in the, the chat. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime, especially with um, any kind of events, uh, upcoming forums, that sort of thing that you'd like to see us in our office at. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Squire. And also, uh, you um, you probably get the information that's on our website for our uh, general board meeting also, so that you, you know. You can... Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and be there as as much as I can just to say hi and also to hear what's going on in CB2. Okay, thank you. Any any questions? Uh... Short questions, all right, Mrs. Allegranga. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Uh, <clears throat> Emmett, uh, glad to have you here. Uh, Barbara, I'm going to ask you to try to talk right into the mic. Oh, I was wondering if you could take a minute and, and give us a, a very short summary of one or two initiatives that the public advocates office is working on now. Because I feel like you don't really know anything. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just briefly Thanks. give. Yeah, thanks for your question. Um, I'll just briefly give you context as well for what the office as a whole does and what the public advocate does. Um, it's our responsibility to help make sure uh, that city government is accountable to New Yorkers. Um, so making sure that uh, the agencies are working as they should, um, and also uh, making sure that we're advocating, as the, the term suggests, for some of the issues that are most important to New Yorkers but don't get enough airtime. Um, and so some of the initiatives that we work on that are, uh, and yeah, thanks for putting that in the chat. Uh, most high profile, we recently released um, our list of the 100 worst landlords in New York City. So we do a lot of tenants advocacy work, um, making sure that not only are we, you know, highlighting the worst uh, landlords in the city, but holding them accountable and making sure folks get the advocacy they need to know their rights and uh, to leverage them effectively. So that's one big initiative that we've been working on recently. We also have a lot of panels um, hoping to get information to folks, how to submit a CCRB complaint um, if you're facing police misconduct, how to um, navigate uh, the public school system. We also have a large constituent service team, uh, which folks sometimes don't know. You can go to your council member, but you can also absolutely always contact our office and we have a dedicated team as well. Uh, just a quick follow up, because you mentioned housing issues. Are are you involved at all? I, I know there's a real shortage of civil legal service uh, attorneys to represent people who are entitled to representation under the law for eviction matters. And uh, so, are you involved in that at all? Trying to um, to increase the number of attorneys available. Yeah, right. Right to counsel is the law that was passed and. Uh, we were just at a rally advocating uh, for, for two things. One, to extend the eligibility for right to counsel. Um, so widening the income bracket that makes you eligible for an attorney, uh, but also programs that uh, help people actually get an attorney. Because like you pointed out, there's a, a shortage of attorneys available for folks. And so we aren't even able to give the folks who are eligible right now um, access to the attorneys that they're owed by law. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Flanoy. Thank you, Chair Gordon. Gordon, Jordan, sorry. Uh, Mr. Sklar, uh, one of the things that uh, the committee is, is also, this, the board is actually concerned about also is uh, homelessness, affordable housing, and also um, mental health issues. Okay, I, I believe if you're focused on all three of those, but that's definitely a, a concern of this, uh, this board. Okay, um, can you keep us abreast on that and keep us updated on that information? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and we have, um, a lot of events and work, uh, around that. And I'm happy to sort of send those, uh, to your manager or chair as well. So everyone uh, gets access to them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Squaw. Welcome community board two, Brooklyn community board two. Uh, Okay, does is, is anybody else uh, want to speak on the com community forum? Okay, if if not, I'll entertain a motion to motion adjourn. to dismiss. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. Motion to adjourn. All right, thank you. I guess there's a second. All right, thank you, Mr. Vibers. Thank you all. Good night. Get home safe, everyone. <laughs> Good night. Thank you Good so night. much.